with your beans, your fried bologna. It's a bean salad actually put inside this three egg omelet, Eggler's Best, cage free. This is the same omelet after I put on some Texas Pete's hot sauce. And this is going to be got you hot and you're cold here. Some nice peaches and pineapple over there. Say, Southern New Jersey uh, breakfast for the first meal of the year. It's a Southern, so southern New Jersey uh, breakfast tradition where uh, we have ham and beans, ham and beans, uh, on uh, for, for breakfast. And then uh, actually what I'm doing here is uh, cooking up uh, two quarter pound burgers. <coughs> Getting ready to go ahead and get those jumbo eggs ready. Uh, white bread. And uh, let's see how this goes. So I put pictures of this out on my uh, YouTube bicycling channel about one of my best burgers and that I make the best burger. And that's a uh, uh, two quarter pound burgers put on top of some ham and some cheese, some beans in the background, two fried eggs and margarine. And uh, people said, we don't believe this. Show us actually how it was done. So I created a video on how this is done. And then what you do is, of course, anybody can do this. It's th there's, there's three pieces of bread. One in the middle is not toasted. These two are toasted. And when you squish them all down like that, you really need to have three pa bounty paper towels. And the purpose for the um, side egg, which I'm going to go ahead and just dress up. And do it like that. Is so that as you eat this bad boy and you start to fall out, you need a little palate cleanser, uh, what do you call that, uh, fancy word for palate cleanser, intermezzo. So in this case, the second fried egg, undisturbed by everything else, is your intermezzo. And this is the uh, Bicycle Eddie Burger Head. Now that my video series is over 8,200 views, certified by Google, um, you know, I'm working up, I've done previous videos, of the kind of food I eat, you know, and you should be as fat as me, actually. I'm a fairly, fairly large person. But I love to eat, and I have to use that food routine uh, as part of um, cycling stuff. So on, the down, so on the down days, when I'm not actually going out for a ride, I may go later on, but uh, I like my winter time rides, um, 11 o'clock uh, or 4.30 or about 10.30 at night. So uh, today's mission is to uh, maximize the chicken. I got some wonderful chicken quarter legs on sale. And, you know, I ate all the chicken that I could. Got a whole lot of chicken meat off of them. And I thought, you know what? Uh, there's too many natural nutrients in the bone. So I'm making uh, chicken soup. You know, in our culture, a lot of times, um, we don't really think that the men are the cooks until we recognize uh, that, that uh, misconception preconception that, uh, you know, you go on TV and you watch all kinds of fancy guys cooking and they're chefs. So I have a little bit of cooking experience professionally and cooking classes um, at university and stuff. And But the person who taught me to cook the most was a, a friend of mine from Haiti, um, uh, Joe Paul. And Joe was a, uh, a food producer at uh, Poliner, P-O-L-A-N-E-R, from West Orange, New Jersey. And they make um, corner all fruit. So Joe's specialty was um, uh, cooking fruit for jellies and stuff, natural food. 
Joe taught me things that he learned in Haiti as a youngster from his family uh, about how to get food flavoroids to come across the food, the, the, uh, the fat, the structure of the lipids, that kind of stuff. And uh, ever since then, um, I've used a lot of Joe's uh, uh, concepts. Uh, and what he did is he, he at, uh, at the food factory where we worked, he was the professional blender for the real uh, touchy kind of stuff that became jelly fillings where they were like making pseudo jellies. And because he knew how to actually blend real fruit. Um, so anyway, what I do here, that's the chicken that I've minced up. This is going to be heavy into the vegetables. That's going to help me. Those porous vegetables will absorb the chicken flavoroids. Uh, I've got noodles, that's going to absorb them, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull out the bones and uh, make some chicken soup. Chicken soup for the soul. So this is the next part of what I'm working on for the One Bicycle Lady food videos, and I'm going to create a One Bicycle Lady food channel uh, to kind of show the strange things that I eat, um, the omelets that I cook, and how I cook my fillets and stuff, all designed. Um, from my experience in the food and beverage industry and also uh, industrial food uh, preparation in a factory as a food producer for three years. So, um, due to all the bones and everything, which has you know, got a lot of flavoroids in them, uh, when, when this pile of bones cools down, I'm going to pick it off some more. You see I use a colander to strain it. There's the chopped uh, chicken meat. I've used half that plate. I'm going to save the rest of that for sandwiches. Or should I determine as I cook it that it needs a little more chicken meat in it? But again, you can see from all the vegetables floating there. So now I'm going to keep this on low, probably for about 40 minutes, to kind of get some of the vegetables to mush, cut to different sizes so that so the carrots will mush down. But of course, the corn uh, and there's green beans in there. You can see a couple across the top. The noodles. So uh, uh, looking good. So uh, continuing with my chicken soup. That's the first batch of. Um, Debone chicken uh, innards and stuff that I threw in there, and then I've got this where I've gone through these again, deboned them by hand, because a lot of this stuff is uh, where all the best uh, oils and juices and greases are.